So when we're talking about the idea of continuity at a point, we might already have a somewhat of an intuitive sense for this. One way to look at this in a very casual and graphical way would be to think of that point that we're looking for when it comes to the continuity and just think of it as striking a line through that point without having to have your pencil lift uh, off the paper. So if you can do that, then you would see that as a continuous graph. For example, uh, for this graph, for point A, notice how we can strike a line right through that point and immediately you would be able to know that this is in fact continuous for point A. But notice how for point K, if you wanted to draw a line from before K to after K, you wouldn't be able to quite strike a line through without having to lift up your pencil. You would literally have to draw from before it, right up to K, lift up your pencil, and then have to draw the rest of it. So, uh, in a casual sense, something smooth that goes through that point, in this case, let's say A, being able to draw smooth through the point A is in some sense something that makes a graph continuous at point A. But of course this casual approach would not be enough in mathematics. So we're going to go through a more mathematical way to think about the idea of continuity at a point. And what we're going to use is the concept of a limit, something that we learned earlier on to help us to really have an idea of what it means to be continuous for a graph at a certain point. All right, so through the use of the concept of limits, which we learned earlier on, we're able to say that if a function, let's say f of x, is continuous at a number, I'm just going to call that number a for now, uh, then we know for a fact that the limit as x approaches a for that function is going to equal f of a. So this might sound like something that doesn't help us at all, but if you actually take a moment to think about what we said, it really, really does help us. So we already know the concept right here of a limit as x approaches a for a function. We know that since we didn't put a direction to that a, we're referring to both directions. And what we're saying is the idea of approaching this number a for x, and then the idea of looking at what y value is being approached. So what we're basically saying is when you're approaching a uh, from both the left and the right direction on x, what is the y value being approached? Well, whatever y value that is, it should equal the same value as when you just plug a in itself and get a y value. And aha, if you think about that casual approach that we talked about, this is essentially what it is. We're basically saying being able to remember strike through from before a to after a without having to lift up our pencil. So starting from let's say here and striking through that point would be exactly that because what this is saying once again is the idea of approaching from the left side a certain value and approaching from the right side that certain same value and that that value itself when x is a needs to equal that same value it can't be here for example because the f of a value would be bigger than the limit and if f of a is greater than the limit then for this discontinuous graph we can't say that the limit as x approaches a for f of x would equal f of a because actually the f of a would be greater than the limit. And of course, like we said earlier, if it is continuous at a, then the limit should be equal to the f of a value. The f of a value should not be greater than or less than the limit. Also, it's obvious that if f of a isn't defined at all, and a is not part of the domain, then it's not continuous. The limit should be equal to a number, whatever this value is. But f of a is undefined, 
and thus limit as x approaches a for f of x is not equal to f of a for this situation. And that makes this graph discontinuous at point a. So we touched upon this earlier, but we're going to uh, think about it once more. If you have a graph like this one right here, then can you say that this graph is continuous at the number a where x is equal to a? Well, you cannot say that. And the reason why is that it is clear that the limit as x approaches a does exist since as x approaches a, and we're talking both sides here, it does seem to be approaching the same value. This is good, so it does exist, but does that limit equal f of a? And it certainly does not, because if you think about it, the limit does equal a certain number. We didn't even need to actually label it. But if you think about it in terms of, let's say that number is just five to make it easier for us. If that limit were equal to five, then we would also need f of a to equal to five for this to be continuous. But does f of a equal five? In fact, it does not because this function when x is equal to a is undefined. Therefore, if we had a table of values, somewhere along the way, if we had a as our uh, x value, our y value would be undefined. It would certainly not be five, or for that matter, whatever value the limit would have been. And because the limit does not equal whatever value f of a is, and in this case, f of a is undefined, we can say that this function is not continuous at point a. Now, of course, if we were to change this graph and we literally defined that point a, only we defined it at a point just kind of somewhere above it, like right here, then can we say that this function is continuous at point a? Well, again, let's use this little piece of information that we just learned. The limit as x approaches a for f of x, is it defined? Well, well, definitely it does exist as x approaches a from both directions. Uh, it looks like our y value being approached is the same number. And we're gonna just call that number k for now. Whatever that number is, uh, it needs to equal f of a for this to be continuous at a. Now, does it equal f of a? Well, it certainly does not, because f of a equals this value all the way up here. So if you think about it, this is a situation where the limit as x approaches a for f of x is equal to a number, and we call it k for now, but this number k is much lower than f of a. And therefore, whatever this number is that the limit is equal to is going to be a smaller number than whatever f of a is because it's defined higher. And so definitely we know for a fact that they're not equal to each other. This number here is not equal to this number. And we can automatically say that the function isn't continuous. It is discontinuous at the point a. Now, literally, if that dot literally dropped in to here, then we would in fact have a smooth line. And had it been a smooth line, had that value been equal to the same K value that our limit was, then sure, that would have been continuous at point A. And we need to also be careful because when you have a graph like this one, uh, you don't want to think that when a limit doesn't exist, it is in some way equal to an undefined value. So for example, for this one, you can see that the limit as x approaches a from the left side is equal to two. And you can see that the limit as x approaches a from the right side is equal to four. They're equal to two different numbers which means that the limit overall does not exist. And f of a, if you look at it, this is an empty, an empty right here, and it's not defined anywhere on a. So f of a is undefined. 
So beware, because some people think in this situation that when the limit does not exist for some reason, that does not exist would for some reason equal undefined. This is definitely not the case. When the limit does not exist and f of a is undefined, those two don't equal each other. And so you, you say that this graph is discontinuous at point A. It is not continuous. As a matter of fact, as soon as you know that the limit it does not exist, it really doesn't even matter what your f of a turns out to be. You know right away that this is not going to be continuous because here is a condition. This left side here, not only does it need to exist, it needs to be specifically a number value. And this f of a needs to exist. It, it can't be undefined. And it needs to be a number value that is equal to this for it to be continuous. That's why we said that if, if, if you want a situation where a function is continuous at the number a, then you're looking at a situation where the limit as we approach a on x is equal to f of a itself. So again, for a function to be continuous at a number a, we need to make sure that the limit as x approaches a is equal to a number that is equal to f of a. So let's try a few questions together to really strengthen the concept that we just learned. So in our first question, it says, from the following set of information, is the function continuous where x is equal to 3? Notice how we have two pieces of information. Well, the answer is no. And the reason why is that if this function were to be continuous, then we should be able to say that the following sentence is true. We should be able to say that the limit as x approaches 3 for f of x is equal to f of 3. But is this sentence true? Because this, this, is, this would show that a function is continuous at an x of 3. But is it true? And definitely it is not true. Because we just said that the limit of uh, the limit as x approaches 3 for f of x is equal to 4. So this entire thing is equal to 4. And we just said that f of 3 is equal to 7. So that's 7. And does 4 equal 7? Well, definitely not. 4 does not equal 7. So you know right away that just from this piece of information, without even looking at the graph, that this graph is not continuous where x is 3. Our second question reads, is the following graph continuous at the point where x is equal to 3? And as you can see, we labeled our graph g of x. All right, so what do you think? Is it continuous where x is equal to 3? Well, the answer is no. And if you remember, we can say that this is continuous in the given situation where this right here is true. But is it true? Well, when limit of x approaches 3 for g of x is equal to g of 3. Hmm. The limit as x approaches 3 does not exist here. Because as you can see, there is nothing beyond on the right side. There's nothing beyond an x of 3. The graph literally stops at 3 from the left side all the way only up to 3. So whereas the left sided limit would have equaled 4 as x approaches 3, the right side of the limit does not exist, making the limit overall not exist. And remember, when the limit doesn't exist, you don't have a number, and therefore that number is not going to equal whatever your g of 3 is. So it really doesn't matter. Actually, as soon as you know this right here, you know for a fact that this is not continuous. But just for exercise purposes, what is g of 3? Well, g of 3 is 4. So if this graph were to even continue a little bit this way, just a little bit, 
just so that we can say that the limit as x approaches 3 on the right side is also equal to 4, making the, uh, the limit as x approaches 3 in general equal to 4, then yes, we would have been able to say that it is continuous. But because it is literally cutting off right at 3, nothing beyond it, not even 0 0.000001 beyond 3 to the right, since it doesn't have that, we know for a fact that the limit overall doesn't exist. And right away, it's discontinuous. So let's look at our last example together now. And this example reads, is the following graph continuous at the point where x is equal to negative 1? So we have this funny graph h of x here, where the graph is entirely encapsulated by this one point, which is negative 1, 5. Literally, there are no other points in this graph. The graph is literally just that one point. Okay, so is the graph continuous then at that point, negative 1 and 5? What do you think? Well, once again, the answer is definitely no. Sure, the h of negative 1 is certainly equal to 5. But can we say that the limit as x approaches negative 1 for h of x is equal to 5? Well, we can't. And the reason why is that as x approaches negative 1 from the left and from the right, well, there are no points where it is approaching negative 1. The only point that exists is exactly at negative 1. And therefore, you can't actually talk about the limit as x approaches negative 1 because it doesn't exist. Had there been even just a little bit drawn this way and that way, and it could, I'm talking, it could be very small. It could be uh, 0 0.0000001 unit to the left and to the right, just drawn a little bit, then immediately I can start talking about, yes, I can start from there and I can go closer to negative one from the left side and from the right side. But because it's literally just one dot at negative one, we know for a fact that the limit as X approaches negative one does not exist for h of x. And once again, if the limit doesn't even exist, we can't hope that this limit is ever going to produce a value that will equal h of negative 1. So we know for a fact that the answer for this is no, it is not continuous. It is discontinuous and negative 1.